Were there signs that Boston bombing suspect Tamerlan Jurnayev was embracing an extremist strain of Islam that could have potentially led to violence? Well, he had an angry outburst at a mosque, and people are also evaluating a posting of a suspicious YouTube video. So how can you tell when someone's religious beliefs have crossed the line and become a danger? Charles Kimball is the author of When Religion Becomes Evil, and that is the topic for today's Belief Blog. Uh, Dr. Kimball joining us now from Norman, Oklahoma. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you, Frederica. Nice to be with you. So if there's a way, you know, to kind of summarize this, who is most vulnerable to becoming a religious extremist of any type of following or faith? Well, we, we now can look across the different religious traditions and through the centuries and I think identify some of the warning signs. None of these in and of themselves indicate that somebody or some group is going to go off uh, and become extreme violent extremists, but uh, a combination of these often uh, should send up flags uh, of concern. And uh, the one that jumps most immediately to mind, there are several that apply perhaps in this case, mm -hmm. uh, is the warning sign of the, the end uh, justifies the means, where some particular end uh, is deemed as uh, extremely important or sacrosanct, and then people justify anything to meet that end. Uh, in the case of the younger brother we have now, one of the postings apparently, uh, he said, you know, when you have the knowledge uh, and the inspiration, all that's left is to take action. So the knowledge presumably is the end and, and the injustice that he and his brother felt uh, somehow justified this kind of uh, violent extremism. Mm, so talking like about, you know, finality. So are we talking about a very small number of people, if, if there's a way in which to calculate? Absolutely, uh, especially in the case, well, of all religious traditions. And what I look at in, in, in my book is, is examples from Christianity, Judaism, Islam, the Hindu and Buddhist traditions. Uh, but in the case of Islam, it's important to remember, of course, that the overwhelming majority of Muslims all over the world are doing the very same things that everybody else is doing. They're, they're getting their kids ready for school and trying to put food on the table and fixing a flat tire and getting ready for grandma's birthday party tonight. They're not plotting or planning anything, but there are small numbers of people who uh, take particular absolutist claims. They get inspired sometimes by uh, particularly charismatic leaders. That may be the case here. There's some indication, certainly, that uh, some of the sermons and messages from uh, the, the, the late Anwar al-Awlaki, the uh, American uh, Muslim leader who went to Yemen, was, was killed in a drone attack last year. Uh, that some of his sermons may have been very inspirational in this case as well, and we've seen that in several other cases as well. But there are Muslims all over the world who, are, of course, are horrified and offended. And here in the U.S., the overwhelming majority of Muslims are uh, deeply distressed and offended, and many groups like the Institute for Interfaith Democracy and many others, uh, or Interfaith Dialogue, I mean, are actively involved in building bridges and integrating and making connections so we have to be very careful not to extrapolate mm -hmm. from the extreme, although yeah. clearly the extreme is very dangerous. All right, Dr. Charles Kimball, uh, thanks so much for all that clarity. Uh, the author of When Religion Becomes Evil. Thanks for your time from Norman, Oklahoma.